Carter Ha is a lonely part of Ettrickdale in the Scottish borders. People used to say it was a haunted elven country with a elf well in the woods. This was the rhyme they used to say to their daughters. Oh, I forbid you, maidens are, that wear silver or gold on your hair, to come or go by Carter Ha, for a young Tamlin is there. The name of Tamlin was famous throughout the borders. He was a young man whom the elves had stolen away from humans. Any girl who entered the Carter Ha woods and found the elf well would come under Tamlin's spell and pay Tamlin's price. The Lord of Carterha had a young daughter called Janet, a high-spirited bunny lass with auburn hair. One spring day, Janet decided she would ignore the warnings about the pinewood. Slipping away from her father's hall, she entered the wood to see if she could find the elf well. She was wearing her green gown and a silver clasp in her hair. When at last she found a well, deep in the forest, she found a tethered white horse grazing quietly beside it. But there was no sign of the notorious Tamlin, so she sat down by the side of the well. No sooner had she done this, than a young man appeared as if from nowhere. He was tall and handsome, and he had deep hazel eyes and black silk hair. It was Tamlin. What brings you to my wood lady? And why are you sitting by my well? He asked. Carter Ha is my father's estate, said Janet, defiantly. So I'll come and go in Carter Ha and ask nobody's permission. Will you indeed, brave lass, said Tam, with a sarcastic laugh. This wood belongs to the elf people, and I am here to protect it for them. Are you one of them, Janet whispered, bold no longer. All of a sudden there seemed something strange about the young man, standing at her side in the fading light. I am indeed, Tam smiled, bowing low to her, but I was not always one of them. Come with me, Janet and I'll show you all the flowers of the forest. And so they explored the forest of Carter Ha in the darkening of the twilight. I must go, Janet said at last. They will be looking for me. I have been gone a long time. Not so very long, laughed handsome Tam. Not so very long. And indeed, when Janet returned to the hall from the enchanted wood, no one had even noticed she had been away. Of course, Janet was in love with the mysterious and handsome Tamlin. Who was he? How had she never seen him before? Was he not a real mortal man? All summer long, she could think of nothing and no one else. She plucked up courage to return to the wood to see her lover. But there was no sign of Tamlin. And once again Tamlin appeared from nowhere, as if he had been waiting for her. Tell me Tamlin, said Janet, looking into his deep hazel eyes. I must know this. Tell me, who are you? Are you a man? Or are you one of the elf people? Tamlin looked at her for a long time. At last, he shook his head and said, I'll tell you the whole sorry story. My grandfather was the Earl of Roxborough. One severely cold day, we were riding back from the hunting. 
and I fell from my horse on that green mound. The Queen of Elves caught me there, and I've lived with her ever since. She's a pleasant enough mistress in some ways, but I am in slavery to her and must obey her commands, and she's not exactly a good elf. Every seven years, she pays a human tax to the underworld, and I'm afraid the next time will be my turn. If you love me, Janet, you can save me, Tom continued, and now there was a plea in his tone. This night is Halloween, and tomorrow is All Hallows Day, so this is the one night in the year you can save me. Listen carefully to what I tell you. Just at the dark and midnight hour, no sooner and no later, the elf people will ride in procession through the wood. I will be with them. If you would win your own true love, you'll come here this night. But how shall I recognize you, Tamlin? asked Janet, among so many people and in a dark midnight wood. Here is what you must do, said Tam. I will be mounted on the third horse. Let pass the black and the brown horses, but quickly run to the third horse this milk-white steed you see before you, and pull his rider down. I will be that rider. My right hand will be gloved, but my left hand will be bare, and I will be wearing my bonnet well back and covering my hair. Hold me tight and fasten your arms for dear life, Janet. They'll turn me into all sorts of beasts and crawlies, a newt, then an adder, then a bear, a lion, and a red-hot iron bar. Then, and only then, you may throw me with all speed into the water of the well. If you do this, then I will be your true love forever, and I'll climb out of the well an ordinary man once more. Wrap me then in your green mantle, Janet, and I shall be saved from the Elf Queen. And remember that if you love me, nothing can hurt you. Janet listened as Tam spoke, and promised with a shiver to do as he had instructed. The next night, a very dark, moonless Halloween, she put on her warm green mantle, crept from the house and ran silently to the black, enchanted wood. Exactly at the midnight hour, she heard the ring of bells and bridles as the elf people came riding down the open space in the forest. There was a shimmer of dim light from the elf lanterns, just enough to see the queen on her black stallion leading her troop through the trees. Then came a second horse, glowing silver green among the trees. The third horse was a milk-white steed, just as Tom had promised. Janet jumped forward and dragged its rider from the milk-white horse and hung on to him for dear life. Then the elves were screeching and screaming around her. There was a green flash and Janet suddenly felt herself holding a loathly, slimy newt. Or was it a snake, winding and coiling itself about her arms and throat? Janice's instinct was to hurl the writhing thing from her, but she remembered Tam's plea and his plight and his promise, and she held firm. Then the snake turned into a growling, hairy bear, and then a lion whose hot, foul breath knocked her to the ground. Still, Janet held fast to her chest. 
Then there was the searing heat of a red hot iron, and she would have flung it from her, but she held on, struggling to the edge of the well. Janet at last managed to step the agonizing iron into the dark waters of the well. There was an almighty splash, and then a great hiss of steam, and Tam Lin clambered from the water, soaking wet, but even more handsome than ever. Then suddenly, the Queen of Elves' voice shrieked out of the darkness. Curse you, Janet! You have stolen my attractive knight! But the happy pair were now beyond the evil powers of the Elven Queen. Janet's love was stronger than the Queen's spells, and the Elven Queen knew she was beaten. Janet and Tam Lin fled back to the hall, swiftly and safely, where they were welcomed with great joy. They lived together in great happiness all their lives, and in the fullness of time, their son became the Lord of Carter Hall. <laughs>